All right. How's it going, everybody? It's me, Dr. Reindeer. <laughs> Almost everybody knows about Santa and his present delivery, all that December 25th, but not everybody knows all about all of the science that goes on behind the scenes to make all of that possible. So tonight, we are giving you an unprecedented tour of the North Pole Research and Development Lab, where we study all manner of winter and holiday and festive science. This lab right here, it spawned so many winter breakthroughs. Uh, we were the one, we were the first ones to figure out that licking a flagpole in the winter makes your tongue stick to it. Uh, we did some really pioneering work back back in the 80s about just how flammable Christmas trees are. And uh, that whole mixing eggnog with booze. Yeah, that was my thesis. Pretty proud of that one. Anyway, uh, we have some fantastic science to share with you tonight. So I am going to introduce my research team of ELF graduate students. Come on out, guys. All right. These are the people toiling in the lab day in, day out, helping make Christmas possible for everyone around the world and to, to keep the holiday spirit alive. And since they're both elves and grad students, both of those mean that we don't have to pay them. So great times. Now, are you? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys, but uh, the uh, the gingerbread is uh, freshly stocked in the break room, uh, and we've gotten some more pizzas and eggnog. So don't worry, I can't, I I take care of you guys. I'm allergic to gluten. What is is there gluten in eggnog? I, I don't know. I don't know either. Let's just roll with it. Uh, we have some fantastic presentations for you. Uh, up first, uh, Barry is going to explain. Uh, the math behind the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, and don't worry, this is not going to be on the test. Hello, everyone. Yes, uh, uh, excited to talk about the math of the 12 days of Christmas. Let me share my screen because uh, I have a presentation for you. Uh, and I thought it was really important because you can't have science without math. And some people forget that. Uh, so we're going to talk about the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, but first to do that, we have to talk about this guy. Uh, this dude uh, named Blaise Pascal, uh, and he's known for a couple things. He really should be known for a really kick-ass name. Um, he's most known for two things. Uh, this, this bet called uh, Pascal's Wager, which basically says, uh, you might as well just believe in God, because if you're wrong, nothing bad happens. But if you're wrong and you don't believe in God, you go to hell. Uh, it's really actually really dubious and people spend like whole careers debunking uh, the validity of Pascal's wager, but it, stick, it sticks around because it's, it's something that's fun and easy to remember. Uh, and it's always fun to try and get one over on God. Um, he's also known uh, for uh, Pascal's triangle, uh, which is what we're going to talk about tonight. And you can see it right here, uh, as is very common with uh, European mathematicians or scientists, he gets the name and the credit for something that people in many countries for many centuries had already studied and, and worked out all the information about, uh, but uh, the name is stuck because you know, that's, how, that's how the world has worked over the past millennium. Um, you might also know him from the Pascal, which is the unit of pressure uh, that you sometimes hear, sometimes hear uh, when Woo. referring to uh, atmosphere. So Blaze, our man here, um, that's, that's kind of the, the history part, that's the setup. And now we've got the 12 days of Christmas. You may all be familiar with the 12 days of Christmas, uh, if you're not, uh, it's a wonderful song, uh, which in, within which uh, somebody is giving somebody else a ridiculous number of gifts. It starts out small with a partridge in a pear tree, which on its own is an absurd gift uh, that is unwieldy, uh, an obligation of both a plant and an animal, uh, really kind of, uh, I, I would say, rude. Um, and it progresses all the way up to like a drum corps of 12 marching band drummers. Uh, you know, this, this is a horror song. Like this is really kind of terrifying. Um, but we're going to get into, you know, just how many gifts did this person give? It's a lot. It's way more than you might think. Uh, and, but before we do that, I just want to take an aside, like the Oxford Dictionary of Nursery Rhymes is a thing that exists. And they've tried to analyze the origin of the 12 days of Christmas. 
I put a lot of text on the screen. You don't have to read it at all. But the Oxford Dictionary says that the, the things in the 12 days of Christmas are merely an irreligious travesty. Like, <laughs> what, what, a, what a roast of, of, of a Christmas song. Um, anyway, that's all the background. What we really want to know is how many gifts are given in the song, the 12 days of Christmas. How are we going to figure this out? We're going to start with Pascal's triangle. Uh, I'm going to call it the arithmetical triangle because I don't want to stop giving so much credit to Pascal and it's all sums baby. Uh, so what you do <laughs> to build Pascal's triangle, you start at the top with a nice one. Uh, we put them in these B friendly hexagons here and then you put another one and another one. And from then on down, uh, you just add up the two numbers to get the one in the middle. So I've got a one and a one here. I add them up. I get a two. I got a one and a two here. I get a three. And you keep doing that. And if you're patient, you can get this diagram that looks like this. Starts out with a bunch of ones on the side. You get some big ass numbers in the middle here because of all the sums. You just keep adding stuff up and it gets bigger and bigger. That's how sums work. Uh, <laughs> What's really cool about Pascal's triangle is it's full of patterns, so many cool patterns. Uh, and uh, one of the fun sets of patterns in Pascal's triangle, the arithmetical triangle, are what happens on the diagonal lines. Uh, the first diagonal is not very interesting, it's all ones, but the second diagonal is your counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, those should sound familiar because they're the things that start every verse of the 12 days of Christmas. One partridge in a pear tree, two turtle doves, you know, and so on and so on. Five golden rings where you pause for a long time. But that's our first key right here is, is we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down to 12. Now, let's ask ourselves, how many gifts there are there on the second day? Well, you know, it's one plus two, and that's three. And we start to see things oh, build shit. up. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. And then when we get to the next here, the next diagonal here, you get what are called the triangular numbers, which is how many gifts each day show up. Oh. So if I look at the third day, I get three French hens plus the three gifts from the first, from the second day for six total gifts. Oh, and shit. If I keep, oh. Yeah, I know. It's cool. Uh. And you go all the way down. And this tells us that on the 12th day, alone just the 12th day that person is bringing 78 gifts Damn. 78 ridiculous <laughs> cool. now here's where it, it really wrinkles your brain uh what? this is uh, a, a graphic representation of the next diagonal which are called the tetrahedral numbers and it's it's what happens if you start to stack the triangles and then add them together so if we look at the top that first one is is day one the first day of christmas the second one, I've got three gifts, one from the partridge in the pear tree and two turtle doves for three. So now I've got one plus three, a little tiny pyramid. I've got four total gifts and it keeps going like that. So it's like this, this cool five uh, level pyramid. It's got 35 total balls in it or 35 gifts. And the fourth diagonal here, boom, all the total <laughs> gifts as you're going from day one to day 12. And when you get to day 12 right here, 364 gifts in the song. What? What? 364. <laughs> so close. Oh One more Sheesh. gift and it would have been a gift a day. But no, 364, that's all you get. Uh, and that is the <gasps> mathematics of the 12 days of Christmas. Somebody's got to have a lot of money for that. Wow. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. That, that, was a, that was an amazing presentation. Um, thank you. I, I, I have a few questions I'd like to ask Please. you. Please stick around. Yeah. Uh, so I, I agree. Blaise Pascal, great name. Great, great name. name. Um, how do you feel? How do, how do you feel that it compares to Pedro Pascal? And how does Blaise Pascal compare to him in terms of acting ability? <laughs> you know, the name, the name is, is, is clearly better. Pedro Pascal, it's too cute, the alliteration. Blaise Pascal, it's, it's, it's kind of just got uh, staying power. Uh, Acting-wise, Blaise was a terrible actor. He tried a lot. Wow. Uh, wow. If you ever look at, like, the oil paintings of him, he's always putting, like, a mug on. Uh, over, overacting, for sure. Yeah, well, I am, I am really excited to see him in Wonder Woman 1984. So, you know, it's, I, I, I got my fingers crossed. It comes out on Christmas. Um, you... Uh, I, I think you made a really, really good point about um, how, you know, a lot of European mathematicians, uh, you know, get credit for things. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of, 
I, I feel like that hit home because, you know, when, when I was, when I was a young uh, mathematician, I came up with the idea of uh, having coffee in, in little cafe bistro tables in the afternoon and then starting a riot after a football game, but the Europeans, yeah. you know, yeah. there's always somebody I'm, that got there first. You always get I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't get riled up about this. It's, it's in the past. Um, but you know, I, I would love to know where, where did you get that, that spinning, that spinning uh, pyramid triangle thing? I, I went to Burning Man once and I, and I saw that instead of the moon. So, so. So it's, it's, it's come, it's from a guy who only identified themselves as Blotwell, uh, <laughs> but they put a huge amount of detail into the creative commons license on the Wikipedia article where this image was found. So they seem to care a lot about it, but they only uh, identified themselves as Blotwell. Well, um, where, wherever you are, Blotwell. <laughs> Thank you. My hats off to you. All right. Well, <laughs> like uh, now, now that we've had a, a great, great informative math lesson, uh, I feel like we should uh, get some entertainment in here. Uh, this, this is an edutainment show. So we teach and we entertain. So if, uh, if I can have my, uh, my graduate team come back in, we're going to do a little bit of improv. Your hands up. <laughs> Hands up. Yeah, I'm robbing this bank, baby. I'm robbing this bank. I'm going in. What 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 is it you want? I mean, it's fine. I'm doing this because I believe there's a higher power that exists. So I'll I'll be fine. You'll be fine. What what about me? I mean, oh, you're robbing us. Do you believe well? It's neither here nor there. As long as I, I can continue doing crimes, as long as I believe in a higher power, because I'll be okay. So uh, if you could just put the money in the bag for me, please. Talk out, Mary Jo. <laughs> so you're just gonna like adultery on me and like? <laughs> it's a thing, sweetheart. You know, uh, <laughs> I I believe in a higher power, so it's okay. You know, it's so that's. So you think like whatever like pain and misery you cause on earth is okay because like you believe in a higher power and like everything's just going to be okay once you die. But what about the human cost? I read in a book once by this man from back in the day that said, you know, like if you believe then you're okay. But if I didn't believe and I did these crimes, then I'm going down there. I got Kristen. <laughs> You're really, you're not going to, you're not going to give me one of the ketchup packets to dip my fries in? No, no, I'm not. You're, and you can't do anything about it. What kind of are you? What, what, what justification do you have for this? Well, it's, I mean, I don't have to do shit at this job, really. And I'm still going to be fine because. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Hey, hi. Hey, hey, hey. you okay? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so um, I'm sure by now you've already figured out it was me that was sending the gifts because I sent, you know, um, one gift on the first day. No animals, no cruelty to animals, or just cheeses. <laughs> and then, you know, like the second day I sent two chocolates. And then the third day I sent you three apples. Um, <laughs> have you done the math? Have you figured it out? You're getting a lot of shit. <laughs> um yeah yeah Buckle up. okay <laughs> you know listen um you're off the shelves <laughs> what clear off the shelves clear off the i i um coming i i don't i don't i don't like this i don't i don't want this i i day five is it, i i just would like to stop this i listen you, we're friends i i believe that you care about me we, you know, we're really good. I, 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 we really have bonded really a lot in this past year, but I, I don't need a lot of gifts, Millie. I, I like you. You're great. Let's just stop it now. <laughs> I mean, you are familiar with the song that I'm getting all my inspiration from. There are 12 days. I, Listen, I, as you can see, I live in a tiny house. I, yeah. I, I'm already like. No, I thought about that. I, I did 
it's not like I got horses, you know, like I, I I'm, I'm thoughtful. I got Kristen. Um, yeah. ma'am. So as I understand it, uh, you would like to buy, um, <laughs> is this, uh, 300 horses <laughs> that's going to be over a million dollars. Are you prepared to shell out that kind of money? Yeah, um, I just really feel that our friendship has gotten to that point. And if it hasn't, this is going to like solidify it because, you know, gift giving is my love language. Love. Talk about million, Katie. <laughs> um, yeah, we're here to pay respects um, to lovely Millie, who <laughs> was tragically killed during a stampede <laughs> of horses that she bought for me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I told her not to. I begged her not to. I said, Millie, no one needs 300 horses. <laughs> and now they're here looking at me all day. <laughs> <laughs> and Millie's dead. And <laughs> Christmas Eve. And I feel like all this could have been avoided. <laughs> Tag out Kristen, bring back Jess. <laughs> How'd you get to heaven? I gave somebody 300 horses. Um, well, I robbed a bank. I <laughs> cheated on my wife. What? And I, for, I didn't give ketchup to someone, but I just rem told her, I reminded everyone that I believe. <laughs> Scene. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are all gathered here today to pay our respects to the great Blotwell. <laughs> May he rest in four-dimensional peace. <laughs> it is a tragedy. Would anyone like to say a few words? Yes, Mary. Yes. I believe he gave us one last quiz before he passed. <laughs> That we have to that we have to um, address. Only I'm not smart enough to really figure it out. So somebody else will. I, I believe that he gave us one last quiz before he passed, uh, but I'm really not smart enough to figure it out. Uh, now I just remember him stacking and stacking and spinning and spinning and uh, a great man. I, I wasn't even supposed to be in this class. I just, I went into the wrong room and I was just too embarrassed to admit it. So I ended up just, I, I never understood any of it, but he seemed like such a nice man. Fair enough. I'm a dance major. I don't need this. But you might one day. It's true. It's true. Matt's important. That was, that was Mr. Blotwell's one, one mantra. Math is important. I have one final quiz for you. <laughs> Mr. Blackwell! Yes, it is I. What? Back from the fourth dimension for one final at question. If Y equals MX plus B and M equals five and B equals four, what does that shape produce if plotted on the Cartesian plane? <laughs> Harry, you have, you have served math well. <laughs> I can finally return to the slumber of the eighth dimension. Uh, eighth dimension? I'm going to the fourth dimension. <gasps> oh, thank God, somebody won it. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> Look, for years, for years, I listened to my teachers. Blah, blah, blah. Math is important. You'll <laughs> use this someday. <sighs> it's ridiculous. I mean, whatever. Just because we work in an accounting firm. <laughs> I mean, I'm with you. Who really needs math, really? I mean, I use Excel and it actually just does all the work for me. <laughs> um so I, I've never had to actually add or multiply any of these numbers that we need for this firm. 
I uh, actually use a program that translates what I say into te to text. So I don't even like write the numbers. I don't even write them. What? I'm a bunch of mathematicians sitting at a French cafe. <laughs> oh, all these stupid people. They think they do not need the math. We have uh, just, them. Just because they have the Excel in the calculator <laughs> app on the iPhone. <laughs> They don't know how good they have it. We toil away. We toil away on these algorithms. Oh, I studied under Blaise Pascal. Oh, that's it. Back to the people in the account room. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what else is crazy? What? Like my language teacher, like my like Spanish teacher. I don't even really need what they were teaching me because I got apps for that. You know, there's. <laughs> There's an app at this point I could say what's what's on my mind and it translates it for me. I don't need to learn a language. You know, the, the language teachers at a French cafe. <laughs> <laughs> we toil away on these apps. I don't know how good they have it. They sing simply because they can order in French. They speak French. It is disgusting. They think they can just use a Google Translate and then all oh, suddenly they can speak any language they want. Tuh, tuh. Ah. <laughs> Talk back to the accountants. Where's my friend? <laughs> <laughs> who, who needs <laughs> language? <laughs> Oh, man. I think she's a robot now. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you for coming on <laughs> Oprah. This is my favorite things episode. So you know what that means. You get a car and you get a car and you get a car. And guess what? This is Pascal Day. So the day tomorrow you get two cars, you get two cars, <laughs> and you get two cars. And the day after that, you get four cars, oh, and wait. everyone gets four cars. Hey, uh, I'm sorry, Oprah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Love you. You look luminous. Um, <laughs> is there any way, uh, instead of like a bunch of, because I, you know, I only live, I, it's just me. I just need one yeah. car. Is there any way we could instead of a bunch of cars get money or 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 maybe like a just cars favorite spot no, it's just well, cars. put them where you can because the day after that you're gonna get eight cars and eight cars buckle up motherfucker you're getting cars hold on oprah oprah i can't pay the taxes on more than one car yeah. Yeah. did you just say buckle up motherfucker yeah, yeah. oprah <laughs> I got everybody but Oprah. <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, as, as your best, as your best friend segment, I, I've got to say your demonic <laughs> voice is coming out more often than you uh, I really thought, I really thought I kept a lid on it. It's I, come out know. twice in this conversation. Excuse me, segment. I'm her real best friend, Gail. Wow. And no, let I'm me so just tell you, Oprah, I think you should be you. I think if you want to swear on your show, it's your show. Swearing is fine. That, that was that was a guttural demonic voice from somebody who doesn't believe in Pascal's wager. That I is her live her life. Listen, listen, I love both of you. You have both been my friends, and I'm using both of you to get more demons into the world. Yes, yes, cool. You can't support everything that you got. That's why you're not a good friend. Uh, oh, Cut yeah. back to Oprah on her show. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. It's Oprah's favorite things again. Yay. Part two. I hope it's not cars. Two, can't things. wait. Not cars this time, so don't worry. <sighs> so we're going to start off. We have, um, uh, well, this is actually some very, very nice Peruvian chocolates. So, uh, yeah, each one of you gets a box of these. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. And you have to eat them on stage right now. <laughs> now hurry up because I'm giving an, out another box soon. Okay. So, don't worry. You have 30 seconds to eat these. Okay. 24. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, this next box. The, oh, great. Great. Everybody's done. 
this next box. It's the same size. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not increasing anything, but you have 15 seconds to eat these ones. <laughs> They're like the kid on Matilda. <laughs> That's right. Eat them. Eat them. Right. Satisfy Beelzebub. Oh, He's lust for pain. I got everybody oh, except for Oprah. Look, uh... <laughs> no, I know I should I shouldn't keep freezing Get time like this, but hey, I'm possessed by a demon. Mm -mm, no, having humans eat copious amounts of chocolate on stage, no. What what can I say? The demon inside me wants to see pain and suffering. I uh... look, we've worked really. You're training and you're Oh, uh, yeah. I, I just can't resist it. Sometimes I have to freeze time more. Sorry. I, I didn't catch that, though. I was busy freezing time. <laughs> You'll never learn. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe I, maybe I should tone it down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Try one more time. Uh, <laughs> again. <laughs> A third time, I just I can't can't understand what you're saying. Hang out, Millie. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Where is my cute little Blotwell? Oh, Blotty, where could you be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Blotty, you're so so cute. But I did get a note home from your teacher. <laughs> Hi. Your teacher said you are not doing very well in math today. Preposterous. Yes, 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 yes. You know, um, your teacher did say that you were doing uh, upper level math classes, but you weren't doing very good. I'm very concerned. I mean, I know, honey, you're only in first grade, but you're supposed to be doing fifth grade work. What is the matter with you? <laughs> okay. I just want to go outside and play with the other kids. <laughs> oh, no, 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 darling. You can't do that. You are in fifth grade math. You are so gifted. I don't want to be gifted. I just want to play with the kids. They're playing hopscotch and 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 kickball. And I don't want to play. <laughs> Tag out Mary Jo. <laughs> Little baby blot well listen. <laughs> Can you try kicking the soccer ball in our life? I just I just wanted to play with you guys. My mom let me outside for once in the first four years I've been in school. Hey baby Blotwell, wanna come to a sleepover this weekend? Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> if you're not invited. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like math. I don't like people. <laughs> what hey. in the world? What happened to me? Hey, baby Blotwell, do you want to be in my secret club? Uh, yes. Just kidding. <laughs> You're not invited. FaceTime. <laughs> well, I know. I, I've never done anything to you all. All I do is go to class. And I, the one time, I'm telling you, my mom hasn't let me play it outside in like four years. And this is the one time I'm allowed. And this is how you all treat me. We're, we're second graders, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I can help you with your math. I just peed my pants. Can you help me with that or... Oh well, if you let me come to your sleepover, maybe. Nah. <laughs> My club doesn't even use math, so sorry. Oh, oh, I don't know. I could help you with the circumference of how you kick the ball and how it will go over the fence every time. Okay, cut to twenty years later. <clears throat> oh wow, you're like a. Super, super successful millionaire. That's cool, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Invented. Yeah. yeah, what y'all up to these days? What y'all got going on while I'm over here just counting my money with my math skills? Well, uh -huh. I just peed my pants again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, the president <laughs> of a very secret club. 
Mm, that's and, nice. Uh, it's just me. Oh. Playing some cup in hand kickball league. Oh. <laughs> hey, do you want to come like hang out at my house sometime? No. No. I pay people to change my pee pants. You should think about that. <laughs> All right, great. Thanks so much. That was an amazing, entertaining, fun show. You know, these elves, they're not just uh, great at research. They, they're also great at improv, which is, you know, a very mentally stimulating uh, activity. So I'm not surprised. Well, we've got another educational segment for you. Uh, this one, this one's pretty exciting. Uh, we all know that that this year there is a, a certain specific virus going around uh, that, that we all uh, try not to get. Uh, but in past years, there were other different viruses that we also didn't want during the holiday season. And Katie is going to give us a presentation on one of those. Hello, hello. I'm gonna share a screen. I also have a presentation. Uh, in the <laughs> spirit of the holidays, we're going to be talking about a little virus uh, that is colloquially termed the winter vomiting disease. Um, so let me let me take you back to Norwalk, Ohio. It's 1968 uh, at an elementary school in the outskirts of town, um, and in this elementary school, all of a sudden, uh, many of the students came down with an illness. Um, some accounts say there were hundreds of children vomiting, having diarrhea. It was uh, really going around. And <laughs> from this outbreak, a virus was isolated uh, and the poor town of Norwalk, Ohio was credited for this virus. Now this mystery virus, what is it? So it goes by many names, but its most common name is norovirus. Uh, and this is an accurate, a scientifically accurate depiction of what happens when you... <laughs> um, I... Oh. And it is, it goes by many, many names. So stomach bug, winter vomiting disease, snow mountain virus, Norwalk agent, poor Ohio, really got the short end of the stick on that one for quite a while. Winter vomiting bug, stomach flu, all of it is norovirus. So what is norovirus? So as I shown you that uh, very scientifically accurate depiction, um, it is acute gastroenteritis, which pretty much just means you are vomiting and you have diarrhea uh, for about 24 to 48 hours. Um, one charming characteristic of norovirus is uh, what we like to call explosive vomiting. Um, <laughs> so if you cannot make it to a sink or a toilet, you may have norovirus. Um, it's really common. Uh, about one in 20 Americans will get it every single year. And statistically, you, dear viewer, will get it about five times in your life. So oh, prepare no. yourselves. Um, this is here because... So this is why it got the name winter vomiting disease. It actually shows a very strong seasonal trend, um, including this year, uh, as with all other years, uh, it peaks between October and April. So, you know, take care when you're, um, well, hopefully you're not going home for Christmas this year because there's problems, but in general, be wary in the winter time. And it's not just in cruise ships. Some people call it cruise ship virus. It doesn't actually happen that often on cruise ships. Uh, norovirus is very common in schools, uh, military bases, hospitals, healthcare facilities, what have you. Uh, it got very well known for cruise ships. Uh, and I'd like to think that that is because um, there is nowhere worse on earth that I can imagine <laughs> uncontrollably vomiting and having diarrhea than on a cruise ship. So that's probably why that got popular. And <laughs> it's a perfect pathogen. Uh, it's very infectious. Only about 10 to 100 virus particles will make you sick. Um, when you vomit, you vomit about 800 milliliters. That's about two grande coffees. Uh. Um, and in those two grande coffees, there are going to be about 32 million viruses. But it only takes 10 to 100 to make you sick. Additionally, very easily aerosolized. If you barf in the middle of the room, 
Viruses can aerosolize up to 30 feet away from that barfing incident. They can then be inhaled or settle out on surfaces. And once they're on those surfaces, they can survive for months to for weeks to months um, on surfaces, doorknobs, cell phones, keyboards, what have you. Um, it is very, very, very easy to transmit and very easy to catch and a very big problem if your roommates get it. So how do we stop it? I have to end this with how we stop it. Um, and I've hopefully grossed you out a lot. Um, it's my goal, but we don't have vaccines. We don't have medication. We have to prevent it. So what do we do? Hand sanitizer, you may say? Wrong. No. Hand Ooh. sanitizer does not work on norovirus. Great <laughs> for many other organisms. Not on norovirus. Got to wash your hands with soap for 15 seconds. Try it. 15 seconds is a long time to wash your hands. It's really boring, but do it. Clorox wipes? Should I Clorox wipe everything? No. You're wrong. Don't do that either. Clorox <laughs> wipes don't work on norovirus. You gotta have bleach. And fun fact, most Clorox wipes don't actually have bleach in them. So you need bleach, and for Lord's sakes, follow the directions on your bleach bottles. That is my story. That is norovirus. Wash your hands. <laughs> wow, great, great. Thank you so much. Um, I, I feel educated. I feel terrified. And um, Michael. having uh, as someone that's never gotten the norovirus before, Am I am I in for like five winters in a row of getting it? <laughs> it's possible. However, oh you there is a a small subset of the population that is naturally immune. Nice. Lucky ducks. So you might be one of them. Uh, or maybe you just have really good hand hygiene. I do wash my hands a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um <laughs> I, I'm kind of interested. So we so we know that it started in Norwalk, Ohio, and it's you know credited as there. Um, how do the residents of Norwalk feel about this? Do they have like a, a sign on the edge of town that says like birthplace of norovirus? I wish no. I from what I gathered, they were not too tickled um, <laughs> that uh, their name was being associated with explosive vomiting. Uh, which is one of the reasons the agent's name was changed uh, after a couple decades. Oh, I thought I, I would have just changed the town name. Right? Really. I Yeah, I think it's, well, I think it's cause for celebration. There should be a monument at that school. What, what would it be shaped like? <laughs> a toilet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you kind of described it as the perfect pathogen. Um in my opinion, the perfect pathogen would be one that doesn't make me vomit and shit myself. Uh, <laughs> yes, but in the pathogen's opinion. Okay, true, true, true. Um, I, it's very impressive that that one vomit can cover a whole room. Um, you know, I I went to a state school. I've seen some pretty impressive vomits, but nothing ever like that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's unnerving. As you can see, why um, elementary schools are a problem. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why I've never got it because I uh, stay away from kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, <laughs> this was. Uh, th th this was uh, very interesting, and I hope we all have the the information we need to combat norovirus and all the other viruses. Um, you know. Maybe inject bleach. Should we inject bleach? Or is that something we shouldn't do? You know, that, it like rings the bell, but it seems like a maybe and no. Maybe that's only a coronavirus thing. Let's yeah. not do this for norovirus. But uh, let's bring out our grad student elf team again and, and give us some more entertainment. Great class. That was a really great session. I want to just take it on down to the floor now. Just take it on down. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It's called, oh, are you okay, Jessica? I'm Jessica? a little worried. What are you doing? Oh, oh this is a new move. Uh, it's called the norovirus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, uh, you know, you're on all fours. All fours. Yeah, all fours. <laughs> and then you're just going to let out a really, like, guttural... A really, really guttural breath. Okay, ready, ready. Uh, 
Okay. You should feel some mucus and bile just rising, oh, that just rising right up. And soon we're going to expel all of the bad, bad energies. Okay. Bad energies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. From your front and your back, you should be feeling. <laughs> <it. laughs> how do we work the back end? I got the front end, but how do we work the back end? <laughs> There we go. I need you to just let it go and work that back end, okay? Just let it go. Let it go. Okay. Let it go. Okay. Let it go. Yeah, we're gonna do it again, okay? Good arch. Good arch, right? Good yeah. Arch. Yeah, we got the arch. Yeah. 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 Did you feel it? Do you feel? all that bad energy just expelling out of your asshole in your mouth i think so it made me a, a little dizzy but yeah i'm a little weak that was a lot yeah. of work okay. it was yeah. you know what let's bring it let's bring it back to sun salutation okay <laughs> <laughs> all right team uh I, I know nobody likes to work on a friday but uh boss came in and gave us this assignment so uh i guess it's just you and me, we got to come up with 50 names for the norovirus by, by <laughs> end of day. Um, so, why, uh, why does this stuff always land on us? I, you know, I, I, I don't even, I don't know. Like, I, it, 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 you pay by being competent. You know, you get the, all the worst work by being the people who know how to do it. So let's try and get it done. Uh, 50 names. Uh, uh, I, got, I got stomach bug, stomach flu, uh -huh. uh, noro shits. Uh, big vomit and uh, winter flu. That's five. What was the last one? Winter flu. Winter flu. Winter flu. Oh, but that's good. Just roll with it. Roll it. Go, go, go. Come on. All right. Uh, oopsie poopsie. Oh, <laughs> Gosh, let me think. Um, I, I wish. I wish we would just let us be creative. Like we should just stop there. That that number six was the right answer. Oopsie poopsie is it? You like, know, why fifty. Cut to the professional uh, namers at a French cafe. <laughs> uh, they just say, oh, see, pussy, they call it a day. Those ignorant assholes. It's so ignorant. They could at least just call it a sheet like everyone else. Just call it a sheet like everybody else. Ooh. Why you have to be so fancy? It's disgusting. Cut back to the ad agency. <laughs> like, all right, that's 25. Uh, like, uh, but I feel like a couple of those are going to get kicked out because we just called it a shit. <laughs> right, I don't yeah. know. This seems too on the nose. It, it, uh, yeah. uh, chuck, chuck it in bucket? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Crushing with the rhymes. Okay. Um, what, can back we just, to can the cafe. <laughs> chuck it in buckets. What is this? I, really, I am not five years old. I, you know, I think, I think that is a good one. Oh, you've let me down. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> scene. <laughs> All right, town meeting, get in here. I've been putting this off for a while since ever uh, since I became mayor, but uh, I know I know we got some you know some some bad branding, and I. I don't want to be the one to put it out there, but it's time. It's time we change our name. I no longer want to live in herpes, West Virginia. <laughs> well, God, you know, what's crazy is, uh, they're trying to tell us that the CDC is coming down here to do experiments and shit. And, ah. our, and our, I feel like if we do change our name, they can't do it. They can't, they, they can't, right. They can't yeah. come down here. Yeah, and, come on. And I think it's a great idea that they're coming down here because we get some money for having them come on down to Herpes, West Virginia. Ah, no, it's, no. You're, you're, you're not disappointed about f being famous for this. We got so many other things going for us. Oh, I know. I know. What? I got an idea. What? Well, media. <laughs> I feel like that's more of a lateral move. You said some other stuff we're famous for. We're also famous for chlamydia. We, well, wow. yeah. And that, 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 that there sounds French. Come on, y'all. Yeah. We have so many more things in this holler than chlamydia, 
and herpes. Okay. If you say we- syphilis, I swear to God, Jess. Oh, we God. have so much more in this in this quaint West Virginia town than the breeding ground for for STDs. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. I think I got some. I'm gonna take it a different direction. Yeah. Yeah. Rusted out truck in the yard. See, oh. now that's that's a step up. Oh, you're I thinking. Think. You're I thinking. Like See, that. I was I was thinking moonshine in a tub. So we we had similar yeah. ideas. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And then we also have families marrying each other. So like kiss yeah. and cousins. Well, hold these, on these now. Are all, these are all really long town names. I was hoping they'd be one word. <laughs> well, how about if you put them together? Oh, right. oh I got it. I got it. Yeah. All right. All right, Kristen. Incest. Oh, boy. Oh, all right. Oh, you know what? I, I, I re- I, I'm going to resign. I, I, I don't think that has other meaning. That's perfect. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna resign from being the mayor. I can <laughs> see. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to stop stop licking the doorknob handles. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't I it, it totally sucks that we're stuck here doing this project. I get it, but you're not gonna go home. You gotta finish. <laughs> Don't, don't even don't interrupt my process. <laughs> if I catch the norovirus, I'll have the inspiration for more names. I, no, that no. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, I get it. You're the head of the department, but I just uh, existential dread. <laughs> <laughs> Standing for buckets. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you? Actually, oh, <laughs> dispersion. Uh, the the vomitron. Oh. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't feel that. And you're just gonna just use your idea. No, 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 no. We could say it's our idea. You inspired me. I mean, you're the one that went the the full uh, on by licking. Do- I I mean, I'm sorry. I doubted you. Are you gonna? You're right. Are you going to, again? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but we're on 45. Can we at least? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Scene. I'm so excited to start my new school tomorrow, Mom. I really think my past is going to be behind me. <laughs> Um, I moved, you know, when we moved from Maryland, everyone knew me as exorcist girl, but here they might know me as Reagan. (laughs) Honey, listen, (laughs) I didn't want to tell you this at the time, Mm -hmm. but there were a lot of, there was a lot of media surrounding our experience as a family. And I know you weren't really with us for some of that. You know, you were kind of in and out. (laughs) Um, There was some news coverage. There was, uh, you know, some some op eds. Um, You know, there was a. They made they made a film, honey. They made a film about it. Okay, it's it's like a classic horror film now. They they. this makes sense. Um, last year at school, it, it's it's really expanded the horror genre. So it's really, you know, you can kind of. I mean, this makes there. sense. Looking back, people dressed up as me for Halloween, and I didn't understand why. Got <laughs> to Reagan's first day at school. Oh, hey everyone. <laughs> well, if it isn't Baby Reagan, <laughs> Baby Reagan. <laughs> Like, we should just call you baby vomit. <laughs> you call me nothing! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to pretend to ask you to be in my club and then lie about it, but I think I should ask you to be in my actual club. <laughs> yeah, you want to play soccer? Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I wish somebody would ask you to a sleepover. When you said my mother sucks cocks in hell, was that like, (laughs) 
<laughs> she does. She does it all. <laughs> invite her to your sleepover, Bethany. Invite her. <laughs> Reagan, I'm having a sleepover this weekend. See you there, yeah. right? <laughs> See you there. No. <laughs> I was going to my mom's house, but, but she's sucking cocks and L, I guess, right? <laughs> Do you have any more questions for me? No. I can spin my head around if you want. No, no, no. no, no. Scene. (laughs) All right, town council, get in here. (laughs) I didn't want to. I didn't want it to come to this. All right, but uh. I've been your mayor for like, I don't know, like four years or something. And uh, I'm I'm sick of being the mayor of bad breath, B.O. New York. It just, it, I, I go to these mayor conventions all over the place and they, I, they think it reflects on this town. <laughs> well, what do you want them to call us? We all got bad breath and B.O. What are we, what are we supposed to do? Something. It's just something that something else that we're famous for. We got the we got the second highest water tower in the state, but nobody calls us water tower New York. Oh, 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 I got something. I oh, got please, something. please put your hand down the B.O. Actually, I can uh, just when you got something to say, just tell me. Yeah. Uh, uh, scabies. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's a, a good one. That's a good, that's one. good one. I got it. I got it. Number one deodorant. That's what we ought to be named. Yeah, deodorant. Yeah. That's a good one. It's a branding. See, we're, 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 taking a, we're taking a negative into a positive. Hey. You know, you know, there are a lot of dead rats in this town. Oh. That's something. Um, we were with that. Hey, my uncle made a coat out of a bunch of dead rats last last winter. That amazing. is disgusting, yeah. and I don't want to name it. Oh boy, you guys are you guys are taking this in another direction. I think we got to play up a positive attributes, not the fact that we make furniture out of dead rats that we oh, find on the sidewalk. Oh yeah, sidewalk. we could be the furniture company. Yeah, yeah, the rat furniture company. Hey, how about all that nuclear waste we dump in the waters? <laughs> They're not supposed to know it. about that, Kristen. Well, I don't know. I don't know, Brandon. Ah. We all know about that, Brandon. I mean, like, what else is new? Hey, what about that time? Go ahead, Katie. I'm sorry. I was just say it's like practically on all our town memorabilia. We're B.O. town and nuclear waste. That's what we got. Hey, remember that time the rats got into the nuclear waste and there were some turtles and then they made a show about hey, we should be famous for that. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Why did why didn't why aren't we famous for that? Well, I mean, I other than the fact other than the fact that if we took credit for the irradiated turtles, they'd probably come after us mm-hmm. legally. But yeah, maybe we maybe we gotta stick with Armpitville, New York. <laughs> Armpitville. It's got a nice ring to it and a nice yeah. smell. I like, uh, I like I like my own smell. I like it. Oh, oh. oh boy. Oh, please. Oh, oh. Oh. oh, you know what? Find another mayor. Um, listen, I'm really sorry about, um, the other night. I feel like things just got out of hand. <laughs> okay. And, and, and I, and I'm sorry, you know, things sort of devolved into what it devolved into. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's just, let's just move on. Right. I don't think we can move on. I don't. I don't think there's a moving on point from here. Uh, you ruined half of our house. <laughs> Look, we get it. You think bleach is the ultimate uh, virus killer. Yeah. 
I just don't understand why you needed to put gallons of it all over our stuff. Like that's my sofa. I know, but I was trying- It was a black sofa. Okay, well, you know, you told me that Samantha was sick the other day and I was just trying to be a good neighbor. I was trying to be a good neighbor and <laughs> I, you know, I got a little, I got a little overzealous. I'm just too good of a friend. I'm too good of a friend. I That's mean, I had to spend 30 minutes explaining to my mother that we are not hippies because everything looks tie-dye in the household. <laughs> <laughs> that was a vintage oriental rug. Mm-hmm. You even you even poured, I mean, the dog somehow rolled in it, and now our dog, who was once a black lab, now looks like a Dalmatian. I don't <laughs> And I'm, I, you're just like, oh, sorry, things got out of hand. I mean, we said bleach doesn't kill all viruses. And then. Is anyone sick? Is anyone sick? The, oh, God, that's your comeback. Wow. <laughs> we're, we're all well. <laughs> Samantha's better. And, and, you know, honestly, I think it looks avant-garde. Mm. What? It looked What? It looks avant-garde. You know That's the art right. critics at a French cafe. <laughs> <laughs> you, you cannot make you, you, boy, you cannot make art with a cleaning product. <laughs> These Americans, they will call anything art. Yeah, they, yeah, they try to make that work to art. They try to make that sick to art. Come on. <laughs> they are disgusting. <laughs> bleh, bleh, yeah, bleh, yeah, bleh. Bleh. By the way, it's not coffee time anymore. The coffee is closed for today. It's cigarettes only. <laughs> that is fine. I'm not feeling too clean lately. Cut back to the neighbor fight. <laughs> oh, okay, fair. No one is sick, but we also fair. have no lawn now. We you, you killed the grass off. Okay, let me tell. Let me tell you that grass. No one else had pristine grass like we did. The HOA like gave us an award every year. Okay, I feel like we're all kind of losing perspective here on what a good friend I am <laughs> and how much of an imposition it was for me to go to Target at 3 a.m. and convince them to open because no Targets are open at 3 a.m. and <laughs> buy all of the bleach products that they had yeah. and rig them into cool backpacks for me to go around and spray, okay? So like, wow. Do you hear the story as you're saying it? Because, I mean... Yeah, I mean, did you at least buy anything else when you went to Target? That's your question! <laughs> <laughs> Who goes to Target for just one thing? Well, yeah, I went in there for bleach. Thank but... you. Thank you so much. Wow. That was that was very educational, very, uh, very entertaining. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you to both of our presenters. Thank you to all of my unpaid lab assistants. And <laughs> I hope all of you had a great time. You know, Santa Claus gets a lot of credit and you know, th th this guy works like one day a year, you know, you, you should, you should really think about the, the people behind the scenes working. You think, you think a sled can go fast enough to, to visit every house in the world in one night on its own no we we did we did aerodynamics work on that you think you you, you think the the reindeer can can pull a sled that fast no that was that was decades of genetic engineering all right now now i'm ranting now i'm ranting but anyway <laughs> please uh think about the the many scientists that that shape our world uh in in the winter and in other seasons and uh uh well, come come on back out and uh, and all right. We would like to wish each and every one of you a happy holidays. Thank you so much. Happy